Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also, good morning. Today, I'm probably going to go ahead and give you guys one of the last big updates to the Righteous Fire Inquisitor uh, before leveling to 100. So I think at 100, I'll probably make a fleshed out concrete, like one part video, not one part, but one video guide to kind of like go over my overall thoughts on the character. So we're 99, about 24% in, and we are farming uh, beyond in Glen Carnes to level up to 100. So with that being said, I do want to talk about my gear swap to Shadow Stitch and dropping Replica Soul Tether, but I want to go ahead and show you guys a map clear first, then we'll go ahead and talk about it. So it's just going to be a silo with Abyss plus Breach uh, in Glen Carnes with basically Abyss and Breach. I must have time to... Just make sure the instance is good, and it is. All right. Nope, it's actually not good. Oh boy, GG, please. GG, please. GG. GG. Okay, yeah, that's the lag that I've been having this league. That's why I wasn't able to update the build right away when I had like that one week to 10 days when I wasn't able to play. It was pretty much from that. It should be good now though. Okay, so we got the Abyss over there. I really like Silo for Scourge because it's one of those maps where you can basically, like, run in a straight line and then Scourge and then backtrack to kill the Scourge while killing the Beyond at the same time. I don't know. I kind of I really like Silo this league. It's pretty sick. We're just going to dodge that Abyssal Depths. So an example of what I mean is, like, we just clear this little section over here, Scourge it up, clear it. Ooh, nice. Okay, Scourge back. Okay, so let me just clear this with Scourge, and then I'll show you what I mean. I mean, that's good enough. Okay, so basically, what I like to do is I go from one side to the other, like this. Scourge, and then run it back to clear up most of the Beyond shit that you missed. And then also kill the Scourge mobs, and then you can just port back. And then sadly, they're still beyond, but you know, that's okay. Pretty sure I can... Can I interact with this in Scourge? No. Ooh, a breach that's gonna be pretty nice just hit go on this come over here and just make like a slow tower the blight is trying to spread. We'll just let the light spread it'll be okay scourge into the breach good 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 okay now let's go chase down that blight okay it's still pretty much fine See if I can hit the breach again. Oh! There goes the blight. Okay. Goodbye, blight. What's funny is it's still proliferating back here. I can see because the corpses were dying. Done. That later. Let's go to the map boss. I kind of wish what they did, and it may be way too rippy if they did this, but I wish when boss fights were like 
phasing, you could just like scourge to bypass the timer so you could keep killing the mobs. Because like every time you scourge up to like nine times, you spawn like, I think like an additional pack that has a rare mob or maybe a blue pack. And with Beyond, it's crazy because it just like, you can see like 175 scourge stacks, 179, scourge out. Guy's gonna pop up, I'm gonna hit him. He's gonna phase, scourge again. That's 183, scourge back. The instance fight over here is gonna spawn adds, so I get to kill those. That spawns beyond, scourge, there's a pack. It's like really, really, really convenient. He should be in the corner here in a second once he spawns. There he is. All right, that's pretty much the map clear. So, with that being said, I want to... Oh, God, this lag is just so bad. <laughs> I hate it so much. So, I want to talk about some changes, basically, and why I kind of made this big change. So, first off, before I start, I do want to state that uh, since we are Explody Variant, um, being as we're Explody Variant now, it's actually better... Um, it is better for us to path around this way down here than it is the path the way I originally did. Uh, and the reason why is you can save an extra skill point pathing this way, um, assuming that you are taking Champion of the Cause. Now, not everybody wants to take Champion of the Cause, but uh, with this recent respec, I chopped off this whole side, uh, including uh, acrimony now i realize that i do have so much damage over time multiplier in my build that dropping damage over time multiplier is not too big of a deal for me if i'm replacing it with sources of increased right so let me use an example um so dropping this damage over here right dropping uh explosive impact and switching my skill tree start here is a big change however utilizing a glorious vanity and remember that these pick random rolls uh, I've got 33% fire damage here, 26% fire here, with 10% of fizz converted to fire. So that puts me at 100% fire conversion uh, on my fizz. I've got a Chaos Resist node here that helps a lot with Shadow Stitch. Uh, and then I've got damage over time here, and then I think there's another damage over time right over here. So I actually make up the damage and gain a little bit using this. Um, and this specific one is uh 7423 if you guys are curious i'm sure there are much better ones but this is just what i happen to land on so uh essentially you can replace replica soul tether if you have a decent glorious vanity spot but the other thing to take into account is your belt really 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 needs to be somewhat decent so most players are going to go with an elder stygian belt because you can hit like basically the same life rolls as this but you'll have a lower life recovery but you'll have an implicit of a jewel so you can actually sock it in like like a 35 life 35 es chaos res and i don't even know what else you can get on it but pretty good i went with a synthesized base because it's easier to craft uh, and i also just really wanted to use it for flavor right it's kind of cool um so this is pretty much what i landed on where i was rolling it in harvest with reforged chaos and reforged life i was trying to hit t1 life t1 chaos res t1 life regeneration I hit T1 life, T1 chaos res, T2 regeneration. Um, sadly, there's no prefix open. I wanted to craft like increased damage, but I couldn't. Anyway, though, moving on. Um, so the swap from Brass Dome to Shadow Switch, Shadow Stitch. As for why I wanted to swap, I just wanted to see if I was actually more tanky utilizing a Shadow Stitch setup. Um, so I'm currently running 85, 80, 80 on my res. Uh, my effective life is significantly higher. When I say effective, I'm not including my resistance calculation. I just mean like my life plus my ES is much higher. I also have a lot of room to corrupt still. So example is like my ring isn't corrupted. My belt isn't corrupted. My other ring isn't corrupted. My amulet's not corrupted and my helmet is not corrupted. So that's a lot of effective life we could be gaining off of corrupting things. I can still safely corrupt my helmet with bestiary but I do not currently have the Chaos Res to corrupt, so I'm probably gonna bite the bullet and just buy a, um, like a Watcher's Eye with uh, resistance on, uh, so what is it, like 50 Chaos Res when affected by Purity of Elements, and I might also grab a Determination Watcher's Eye on top of that and just ditch the Malevolence Dot Multi because I gain so much damage going to Shadow Stitch. So what I mean by that is, because you have a higher life and ES value, 
your RF scales far, like further, I guess you could say, on a Shadow Stitch setup than on a Brass Dome setup. The difference is it's a lot more annoying to gear into a Shadow Stitch setup if you want to like actually face tank everything. Uh, one big thing would be like you can still be crit, right? So when you're running like T16 maps with double damage mods, triple damage mods, 200 scourge stacks, you can still occasionally just get like one tap from a monster because of kind of how crazy critical damage scaling is. So to fix that, if you notice here, I have 50% reduced extra damage from crits on the shadow stitch. Then over here we get 30%, so 5 plus 8 is 80, or 5 plus 8, you, yeah, you get the point, never mind, never mind, that was bad. Uh, so you got, you got 50, you got 30, and then you have another 30 you can get here, and that basically puts you at 110%, so you don't really take crit damage. Uh, when you pair that with the high effect of life and decent mitigation, it's pretty, pretty good. The only thing is my armor has went down quite a bit, and this is why I'm thinking of getting a determination purity uh, watcher's eye to kind of fix that, but I'm not really dying. It would just help me face tank things like potentially Awakener's Meteor uh, and things like that. Yep, that's pretty much about it. Remember, you can absolutely do the Glorious Vanity Swap while still using a Brass Dome. You do not have to go Shadow Stitch for this variant. It's just a lot of players have been asking me about Shadow Stitch, and I really have to kind of like play it out before I can honestly like give an opinion on it. I do want to state one more big thing. So in the explosion setup, I do want to state that I was at a very specific breakpoint. I don't have the number right now. I think I'm at 13 radius for my Herald of Ash and dropping explosive impact actually pulled my breakpoint down to like 12 radius, which I did not want. So to get my radius back, I actually came over here and got a second cluster setup. Now this uh, second cluster setup is kind of cool because it does save you on some currency. Now, if a lot of people start doing this, it's not gonna save you currency, but um, if you'll notice here, I have a different large cluster. That's because I dropped Master of Fire to get a new Master of Fire. So this large cluster setup right now is just Prismatic Heart Smoking Remains for very high sources of increase. So this is like 30% alley, this is 35% Ellie, right? So very good between those two. Also, the res helps a lot. Then this is widespread destruction sitting in the back. I don't intend to, pa uh, to path to it. Down here, though, I have Heraldry, which is basically, if you look at the, the resistance for four seconds, at first I thought, oh, this is kind of like a shitty version of fire exposure, but it's not because uh, I tested in PvP and there is no like lingering effect. It's permanently on there. They always have fire exposure if you have Herald of Ash on. And in this new setup, we're always running Herald of Ash, right? Then over here, I have Dark Messenger. And this is important for clear because that 25% AoE is what nets me back the breakpoint for my Herald of Ash. Now, you'll have to specifically look at my POB at my breakpoints under Herald of Ash. This is not something I'm very good at explaining. It's more of just like I saw it and okay, it made sense to me, got it. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. Just know that with the Shadow Stitch setup, there is a lot more room to min-max than the Brass Dome. You could get way higher max fire res. You could have like max fire res boots. You could go for higher cold and lightning. You've got a lot of gear to corrupt. Your single target damage is much higher. I'll also bring another thing uh, up. When I was playing Brass Dome variant, there really wasn't much of a reason for me to use Vol RF. It didn't feel like it was doing that much damage. In the Shadow Stitch setup, Vol RF feels great. It feels so good in this setup. Uh, it does so much more damage, so I'm very ex uh, excited for that. I do also want to state, I don't have much any YouTube content of it, but we have cleared, uh, you know, all the, the Maven Witnesses. I've done Simulacrum Wave 30 with Brass Dome. I haven't done it with Shadow Stitch yet. Uh, we did Simulacrum Deathless. Um, we did, uh, the only thing I actually died on all of these was Cortex. Not Cortex, sorry. Um, the feared i died three times on the feared because i just don't really know cortex mechanics and he kept pulling me into flame blasts and shit so it was a bit messy but it was totally just on my fault anyway that's pretty much about it hope you guys had a wonderful time remember if you did please feel free to like share and subscribe and don't forget you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv box take care catch you guys all later thanks for watching